it sounded like a flock of birds, you know, kids getting started on, on clarinet. So for the longest time, I thought it was a terrible <laughs> instrument. That's the bass over. Yeah, that's the bass over. Sure. But, uh, yeah. Hi, Liam here from Zafran. Um, and I'm delighted today to have Eli Brown with me for a little chat. Eli the conductor, who is conducting uh, us at the moment. You come from America, obviously, but you studied in Germany as well, and now you're back in America yeah. as assistant to Esa Pekka Salonen. Yes. Congratulations. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. In San Francisco. So how's it going? It's going good. Yeah, it's going good. We had the, it was the first week, actually, this past week in San Francisco as, as assistant for the gala concert. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, very splashy program, very splashy kind of season opening. So um, um, lots to be managing also as an assistant. Yeah. So what, what, what does your yeah. job entail as an assistant? So I guess formally I'm like, um, it's a it's a sort of mentorship program, but I'm also there actually as a, what's called in the United States a cover conductor. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if anything were to happen to the the chief conductor, I'm sort of there as the understudy, able to jump in. Yeah. But then also giving you know feedback on balance, particularly when there's soloists, you know how that's working, if diction is coming through clearly, mm -hmm. um, you know if there might be misprints in parts or things that. You know, it's always helpful to have an extra set of eyes or ears on, yeah. on something. There's a lot to a lot to catch. Yeah. So. Oh, great! And do you get yeah. to conduct the orchestra sometimes as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I didn't this first time around, but um, uh, I think I'm slated to do like a, they have a new music series called Soundbox. So mm -hmm. I'll very likely be doing one of those. And um, yeah, there may also be times where I have to. Yeah, we'll, see. well, I don't know if I should yeah. hope for you that you get the chance or that uh, yeah. Esa Pekka stays healthy. Yes, but hopefully both. <laughs> so, um, I saw on your website you won first prize in the Korean International Conducting yeah. Competition. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank so you're you. obviously Thank you. traveling a lot and doing big things with big orchestras. Yeah. What What is the appeal of coming to a smaller group like Zafan? There are maybe, what, 10 people here? Yeah. What's the appeal for a conductor of conducting a smaller group? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting that you ask this question. I mean, I love working with this size of ensemble because it feels so collaborative. You feel like there's really a possibility for dialogue mm -hmm. that, especially with like large orchestra, is quite difficult to find. With chamber orchestra, you can have that sometimes, but when you've got 10, 12 play players in the room, it's it feels really like a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. and, and I like this. And also with, with new music, you know, you really feel like I mean, obviously today we had the composer in the room and so you feel like you're discovering things and kind of making making the music in real time yeah. in a way that feels really exciting to me yeah. and you you don't exactly have that same feeling when you're doing Don Juan which has been done you know yeah. everyone has <laughs> learned these Polish a yeah. <laughs> hundred times over and they're you know ready to go yeah yeah so oh, cool. and I have a question and I saw that you're a trumpet player yes do you still play I do, uh, much less so yeah. than, um, uh, than when I was growing up, but um, I think somehow that was a transition point for me into, into conducting because I was, obviously as a trumpet player, you do have lots of time to sit and think yes. at the back of the orchestra, yeah. and oftentimes I'd bring like a full score and be really curious as to what was going on mm. and try to sort of, found myself getting really curious about yeah. what was going on. Yeah. And do you think you being a trumpet player makes you more lenient towards the trumpet people in the orchestra or no. more critical <laughs> way more critical <laughs> way more critical yeah um yeah um i mean i have things to say to all parts of the orchestra but oftentimes i find myself um particularly demanding particularly in terms of in terms of color actually i think the brass can do a lot more in terms of color than sometimes they think yeah um so yeah the crescendos that go sideways as well as forward yeah. Brass plays in San Francisco, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is an amazing brass section, yeah. truly, like really legendary section. Okay. Um, it's your lunch hour, so we need to be quick. I've got some questions, some quick questions yes. here. Uh, where are we? What is the best part of being a conductor? Ooh. Um, I think. I love getting to meet new people and I love getting to travel. I think these are these are really uh, wonderful parts, but actually the best part is when you have a chance to reconnect with people that you've worked before yeah. through music, to have 
many different sort of little communities yeah. in different parts of the world and you can you know go back to Seoul and suddenly oh yes there's this little community of musicians yeah, here yeah. or here in Berlin or um, or elsewhere yeah. so okay I love that that part of it yeah and what's the worst part of being a conductor um, the, the jet lag is can be really tough yeah and you kind of just have to learn to to live with that it yeah. also you know it's funny i was thinking about okay do i become a composer do i become a conductor and i thought oh composers spend all this time on their own in the room writing and conductors are always with people but actually sometimes it can be very isolating also mm -hmm. as a conductor um, and i think as a composer actually <laughs> oftentimes they really have to be engaged with yeah. with the musicians so um yeah there's a dichotomy there yeah. but the um there the community is is a great part but also there's a loneliness which can also be there as well okay yeah um and if you could choose one instrument in the orchestra to banish you would never play in the orchestra again which one would it be and why wow that's a really difficult question well i mean <laughs> We, we have a piece with, with bass oboe, <laughs> okay. and it's it's a very interesting instrument, yeah. but it has sort of been removed from history yeah. because it, it doesn't really accomplish anything all that much. Um, so I, and I think oboists also wouldn't be too unhappy mm. if they didn't have to play the bass yeah. oboe anymore. It's a very diplomatic um, answer, well done. Yeah, I mean... Um, everything else is pretty critical, you know. Um, I don't know. I think I have to, you know, when I when I first started, it's a bit of a tangent, but it is sort of an answer to this. When I was first choosing an instrument to play when I was in elementary school, actually, I really wanted to play the cello at first. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, it's too big, and I don't want to carry this around, so that's out. And then I wanted to play saxophone, but I was going to have to do a year playing clarinet before they let anybody switch okay. and you know my first years of, of elementary school I would always walk by in the morning and hear the clarinet class and it was it sounded like a flock of birds you know mm -hmm. kids getting started on, on clarinet and so for the longest time I thought it was a terrible yeah. instrument and then it was only later when you you know you get to hear these professional clarinetists who can make you know, Christian needs to be like nobody else and so many different colors and such a massive range. And yeah. I was uh, quite initially misled. So yeah. I think if you'd asked me, you know, 15 years ago, I would have said without a doubt the clarinet. Yeah. But now actually it's one of my favorite instruments. Okay. So that's the bass over. Yeah. That's the bass over. But um, yeah. Last thing, we've got a little challenge for you here. Yes. We're going to do this at the end of every video now. Oh, great. You're the first one to do it. So you can't get any worse than first place. Okay. So that's good. You've got a metronome here. Uh huh. You can tap in the tempo. Uh huh. And we want you to tap 135 beats per minute. Ooh. You get about five to six seconds. And for every beat that you're off, you get one of these Zafran stickers <laughs> that you have to put somewhere. Okay. okay. <laughs> Super. So okay. when you're ready, it's going to make a sound when you tap, and then you can clean up. Okay. Let me just do something. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Just this one? Yeah. Okay. That's too fast. Okay, stop. What did you get? 123. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I overshot it in the game. You get some stickers for me. We're going to do that later. <laughs> but you're in first place. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And Thank all the best you. for the rest of the, the week with us. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank cool. you. See you soon. Thank Bye. you.